Hello and welcome to the on Mix Show. In this modern day and age, online learning is a widespread concept adopted by many educational and corporate institutions. A great example of an engaging platform for online learning is Nullscape. Today, we speak to Rajiv Jayaraman, who is the founder and CEO of Nullscape. He will share with us his experiences in running a successful company. Also, we'll find out how his background in theatre, filmmaking, as well as his deep passion for technology, design and education inspired him to build Nullscape. Join us in this episode of the Literonomic Show with Roshan Thiran. Welcome to the Leadernomics Show. I'm with Rajiv Jayaraman. Rajiv, thanks so much for being here with us. Pleasure you know, to be here. You have a very interesting background. You worked in Oracle for a bit, and now you have your own company, CEO yep. and founder of Nallscape. Yep. Tell us a bit about how you got to where you got to today. Sure. So I did my education in India. So I did my um, engineering in a premier engineering school in India called Bits Pilani. Uh, focused on computer science and then went off to do my master's in the US. Uh, again, computer science was my passion back then. Why, why, why computer science? Um, I, I guess um, the, the logical aspects of um, building programs and, and building things that impact uh, lives of people. Uh, so that was what was fascinating me about uh, computer science. So uh, went off to the US and, and most this, this was something you decided on yourself not your parents had pushed you or I think it was a little bit of social influence as well okay. so uh, I would be lying if I told you that I had absolute clarity on what I wanted to do there was a little bit of a group think as well yeah, that went yeah. on but ultimately I think I made the right choice um, more specifically inside computer science I um, was fascinated by image processing and graphics uh, the visual elements of uh, what can be done using computers uh, so that's what took me to the uh, US uh, when I did my masters I focused on image processing and part of that was you know really understanding complex 3D data sets um, and how we can use com computers to understand be it health data or, or uh, you know climate or weather how do you understand that from uh, using you know large computers. So um, I was focusing on what is called as cluster computing. Okay. Uh, how do you use a cluster of computers to understand something complex? And that led me to um, a job at Oracle in California. So I, I got into uh, the cluster computing division. With, with Oracle? With Oracle. Okay. Uh, so this was in Redwood Shores, the headquarters. Uh, so I started off in a technology-led role. And I was developing a lot of products for Oracle, um, building high availability solutions which means that you know how do you make databases run in enterprises 24 by 7 without any failure so from image processing and computer graphics to high availability there's a yeah. little bit of a jump that happened but I really enjoyed that and in many ways what you hear in the market today is cloud computing right the essence of that Correct. is the precursor to that, yeah. is precursor to that. Yeah. so it was a great uh, training ground for me to get exposed to um, some of these complex uh, sure. systems and, and how did that lead to Nullscape? Uh, yeah, so you were in Oracle a couple of years? Yeah, a few years in fact, uh, was, almost what, six, 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 six years. years. Yep. Uh, so I was um, you know, filing patents, developing mm, products okay, and, okay. and things like that. Uh, so it was um, you know, really uh, an exciting role from an analytical thinking perspective. But what I was lacking was the creative element. Mm. And that's when I uh, was in the Bay Area. There's a lot of Indian community in, uh, in the uh, Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. So I, I ventured into um, filmmaking and theater. Mm. So a lot of storytelling and okay. every weekend mm, you This is on your own or? On my own. On your own. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was just exploring different okay. facets of uh, life. Things that I really wanted to do uh, when I was younger, but I was never able to do. So I, I ventured and you know, as it turned out, I realized that I, maybe I have some passion for it. Maybe I have a knack for it because we were winning awards, getting recognized in the media. So that was a classic left brain, right brain yep. uh, situation. Uh, while at Oracle, I was filing patents and yeah. weekends were devoted to storytelling. Okay. So and, and storytelling in what sense? Are you were going to stand up? Or, I mean, how? how yeah, how stand up, okay. um, writing, uh, you know, okay. uh, scripts, okay. uh, directing stage plays okay. and things like wow. that. So okay. in, in a lot of ways, I think my training for leadership happened through that experience. Yep. 
although at Oracle, you know, it was more of a formal environment, yeah. but working with a lot of experts in theatre where I had no idea how lighting worked or sound worked, but you had to get all these pieces together and, right. and put up an experience for the audience. Yeah. And you get that feedback immediately, right? So it's a live environment, nothing can go wrong. That's right. So uh, I think even today when I am in a pressure situation, I look back at my theatre days and, and ask myself what would I have done in that, in that particular situation. So Fantastic. yeah, so that's how I sort of started thinking about what next, okay. uh, because technology and storytelling, two completely different yeah. worlds. Uh, so that's when you know the idea for Nolscape I think came about. Okay. Uh, so I did my MBA from NCR. Uh, so I wanted to take some time off, okay. think about what I want to do in life. Uh, and, and, and that was because you had this conflict that was that's right, kind of which was unresolved. Was with you, yeah? Yeah, so I wanted to take a quick quick uh, pit stop, think about, reflect, and it seemed like a good option to go to France. At that point in yeah, time, it's always a good option. Good yeah, points, right. <laughs> yeah, and because I've never been there, I thought a new environment will help me think uh, deeper about what I really want to do. Uh, so from there to Singapore, um, so NCR has a Singapore campus. campus. Yeah. So I landed up there, and it was during one of those courses that I did at NCR that the idea actually came to me. Uh, so we were playing the simulation game as part of this organizational behavior sure. course, and uh, so it was, you know a software program and a lot of storytelling and uh, so it seemed like you know magically something came to me and it was in a domain that I really enjoyed education where I was previously involved in some charitable activities with education as well so it okay. seemed to all fit in um, so I parked that idea for a little while and let it percolate a little bit and then I started looking around uh, to see if there are more products like this in education because even at NCR at top yep. B school I had problem connecting with a few courses like finan financial derivatives and things like that. From a concept standpoint, you would understand it, sure. but um, the problem I had was I didn't know why this prof was teaching me this yeah. or what is the real world relevance. Right. And the application, the application bit of it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And and overall, when you look at it, education and corporate training seems yeah. to be ailing from this hmm. disconnect. Um, yeah. The thinking versus doing. Yeah. Uh, concept wise, everyone understands it but how do you apply it is always a challenge. Mm. So I thought this could be an interesting way of solving that uh, problem of this disconnect. So I looked around uh, to see if there are more such products for finance, for strategy. It turned out that there, were, there weren't any, mm. right? Or ma too many of these products, yeah. Yeah. even at a top institution like uh, INSEAD. So, um, and I was fortunate that I got an opportunity to incubate the company at NCR. When, okay. when so I it was incubated in Singapore? In Singapore. Okay. So the first year of Nolscape, um, the company that I'm currently the founder and CEO of, uh, we incubated at the NCR Singapore campus. And I couldn't have asked for a better place uh, because I was able to bounce off ideas with the top you know, minds in the management space. And the ability to see it in action when the executives were using the products that we were developing, we saw you know what worked, what did not work, even from a user experience standpoint, mm. how do we design uh, software products? Yeah, so that's the start of Nolscape. Oh, fantastic story. We're going to take a quick break, and sure. we're going to be right back here with Rajiv, here on the Leanonomic Show. I'm back with Rajiv Jairaman. Rajiv, it's been a good conversation so far. You know, and you were talking a little bit about starting up Nolscape and yep. how you came about doing that. And as we explore a little bit, I'm sure, you know, in the early years, as you first started up uh, Nolscape, I'm sure you had some challenges, yes. obstacles, issues. Talk us through that and tell us some of the insights you got from that. Sure. Uh, so the biggest obstacle uh, that we faced was that, that the whole concept of gamification, mm. that learning can be gamified. I think that notion was uh, probably not well understood back then. Uh, because across cultures, I think we take learning very seriously, right? Uh, back in India, we, we find, you know, parents would sell their homes to get their kids educated. It's, it's taken yeah. very, very seriously, right? And when you say that you can gamify it, it's somehow not accepted because, you know... Is you, it, it, is, does it seem like dilution? It, like dilution or trivializing yeah, learning. The thing, yeah. But the, the reality is, so far in the last 150 years, if you look at the history of learning, we have somehow managed to industrialize this whole process where the so-called expert comes in and, and delivers a lecture and the participants you know, need to absorb it yeah. and do something with it. Yeah. Right? So this whole process is provider-centric. 
or, or the expert centric. Yeah. It is not learner centric. Yeah. Now, uh, with technology, it is now possible to shift that power back to the learner. And in fact, the realization, it, it happened recently as well, when I was playing with my daughter on, uh, on an iPhone or an iPad, she is able to almost beat me in a lot of games. Right? And, and as uh, a parent, I'm very proud of her, but as somebody much older to her, and somebody who has done computer science and all that, I'm really ashamed of myself. Um, and it struck me that, you know, these kids are growing up in an environment where things are very learner-centric. They, they are learning in a very self-directed fashion, yeah. and that maximizes their learning right. potential. And also at their own pace. At their own somewhere. pace. Yeah. And there's quick feedback that comes their way, they know exactly where they stand. Um, so when it comes to, you know, pedagogy, so there's a lot of science behind it. Pedagogy is a science where, uh, or method, where something is designed for the learner and it is delivered. And andragogy, of course, is something that is more adult learner centric, where the assumption is that the learner is intelligent mm -hmm. and allow the person to try out, experiment and fail and learning will happen in the yeah. process. Yeah. And the realization that happened to me was my daughter was getting an andragogic environment Whereas when I go to a training program, I'm getting a pedagogic environment where I don't have the power to decide my learning outcome, right? Uh, so I think that's the, the fundamental uh, change that needs to happen yeah. where... So, you, so I, I guess the struggle would be to educate uh, yes. the mass or educate organizations specifically yes. that, you know, we need to embrace this change uh, because yes. all around us we see that change happening. Yes. But at a, at a corporate learning space, this, this is not happening fast enough. Right? Fast enough, yeah. Um, so, and also it is tied to the trend that, you know, when you look, you know, you observe your life as a consumer. You've got an app for hailing a cab. Yeah. You've got an app for ordering food. You've got all of those. But somehow when you come into an organization, it seems like the 1990s, right, where, you know, it's monolithic systems and someone decides what's good for you. So it's, it's the one-size-fit-all mm -hmm. approach. I think that we need to revisit, um, and that's probably the biggest mindset block uh, that happened, you know, in the early days of Nullscape, mm. where you know gamification and learning didn't yeah. go uh, so fit into. I mean, how did you overcome it? I mean, so uh, we started giving these organizations a, a taste of what is possible, right? When we started setting up experience centers or uh, day-long workshops where they would get themselves immersed, that's when they saw the power of it. Right? And, uh, and, and from there on, you know, people started believing it. And by then, gamification as a term also caught on, yeah. right? And even in the West, uh, a lot of research has been done around learner-centric systems and why it is important to gamify things. Because ultimately, you know, no matter how important learning is, at, at an individual level, we do seem to have some motivational issues. It's, I, I would compare it with going to the gym. If you ask a lot of people, would you like to go to the gym? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. But how many of us tend actually to do actually do it? Again, there is a, a gap between wanting to do it and actually doing it. And where is a gap? Mostly it is in the motivational front. Same case with learning. If you take a lot of these online um, you know, MOOCs, yep. uh, fantastic courses delivered by fantastic people, but then the completion rate is around 5%. Now, where is a problem? The problem is, there are no motivational structures, sure. right? So, and I think that's where gamification comes in. Mm. And once companies started seeing that with this shift of power to the learner, we need something else to accompany it. And, and gaming is a great way to engage people. Mm. And so how does Nowscape work? I mean, talk us through a little bit about what, what you guys do at your organization. Sure. So we uh, develop a lot of gamification platforms and products for professional development. Uh, starting from an individual contributor all the way to becoming the business leader. So we've got uh, products and solutions that will handhold people through those transitions. Okay. So there's a classic leadership pipeline by right. Ram Charan, right. where we talk about you know the the the, the, the different transition, stages, different stages, stages and transitions that yep. need to happen. Yep. So those are quantum jumps that happen in a person's life, um, and we need to deliver it at the right time when the person needs help, and it needs to be experiential. Right. And how how do you make that experiential? So we make it through uh, simulation games where the participant would uh, get immersed in a certain situation and there are a lot of things happening in that environment and the participant is learning by doing okay. and they are taking decisions, right? And uh, with every decision they are getting a feedback and in that complex environment at the end of that they get a report which talks about 
you know what they have done in the game okay so in a very quick so almost like an assessment of assessment yeah, of their the capabilities gaps and their strengths and so yes. on okay yes so if you compare this with um, let's say a survey or a questionnaire a survey or a questionnaire does not have the context right so a person gets a short paragraph and a few options and uh, most people know how to game that and you know pick the seemingly right options whereas uh, in a simulated environment it's a complex scenario there is a goal to be achieved you've got your resources just like any other uh, consumer app that you would have played uh, you've got those resources how do i tactfully use these resources to achieve my goal and that brings out the the essential traits of the leader or or the manager and we are able to capture that as as data points which enables us to produce the report amazing uh, so and and i mean I'm, I'm, what's the success rate i mean to to some extent uh, how has has this been something that's just caught on like fire and you seen your business grow tremendously yeah so we currently work with around uh, 125 clients across 10 countries okay. and uh, so the patterns are and the needs are similar. very similar so the gen y millennials coming into the workforce sure. and they have no patience to sit for an entire day how do you deliver something that is impactful and engaging at the same right. time in bite sizes bite size okay. learning and this is done through mobile and through other technologies yes like mobile that. and uh, on the web as well sure. uh, i think the keyword is engagement right so we can't uh, have systems that go for a day long or two day long uh, can we do it in a shorter period of time and also from a business standpoint can we provide data which will suggest uh, that this person is ready or not ready and what are the gaps and it should be helping the organization as well fabulous i still want to tap your brain on some advice that sure. you can impart to entrepreneurs and sure. uh, people who are struggling in their businesses so we'll we'll be right back here with rajiv here on the leader on mic show i'm with rajiv jayaraman and the founder and CEO of Nolscape Rajiv we're going into our special challenge round thinkonomics round and I'm going to give you a couple of questions you have to answer really fast sure. right? okay we'll start with this if you had all the money in the world how would you change the world i think i would focus on uh, basic education i think education is a tool for transforming people uh, at a very fundamental level so i think i would put that money on to put to put it to work for education all right let's see what is the one thing you have not done that you really want to do before you die what's holding you back um so maybe i'll direct a film uh, going back to my passion <laughs> of storytelling uh what's holding me a back hollywood block, blockbuster blockbuster or a bollywood one bollywood, better oh even better <laughs> it's undone so what's thing. holding me back um, i guess my current priorities i i really am passionate about what i'm doing at nolscape okay. which is um, really working well to integrate my passion so i don't really miss not directing a film but i guess okay. some day so we'll hold you up maybe we'll get you to direct a film with us sure that would be great okay what is wrong with the world today how should you fix it uh i think what's missing in the world is uh, compassion uh so i think while we are all chasing profits and money uh somewhere i do believe that sustainability is not getting its due share sustainability from an environment perspective or people perspective uh so i'd like to see a lot more compassion and love in okay. business okay fantastic and time's up so sure. good uh so you made that round relatively easily okay <laughs> uh, let me ask you a couple more questions i i, I think it's interesting you know your background i'm sure a lot of young people would you know kind of listen to this interview and say hey rajiv tell me uh, how i can be like you yeah. uh you know what what advice would you give me you know if i'm just you know finishing up my university and i'm coming out to the world yeah. and i want to be like you i want to start my own company i want to you know do something that's game changing yeah. uh, what advice would you impart to them uh so i think the first uh, thing first advice would be to find what you're passionate about yeah. i think that's the number one difference it takes a long time to do that to do that it took you a couple of years to years figure to out years to do that um so you know pre advice to that is try and immerse yourself in as many areas in life as possible by volunteering mm. uh that's one advice that i would try to give to and, as many and you did a lot of that did okay. a lot of that and in a lot of ways theater happened because of that right so it was a completely unknown field for me i just dabbled into it and then found myself and i like to think that the more you get lost in your search the more you will find yourself uh so to find yourself you have to lose yourself in something uh so philosophically and profound and very that's good. right so um and try and volunteer as much as possible in areas that you're not familiar with find yourself and i think you will find your passion and then put all your energy into it okay very good let me you know if you were if a group of ceos you know just imagine you had to advise a group of ceos and you know what sort of 
nugget of wisdom would you impart to this group of CEOs? Yeah, so um, I'm sure we are all familiar with the VUCA world. Things are changing so fast and at a very furious pace. Uh, I do believe that uh, for organizations to survive uh, this kind of a rapid pace, uh, we need to think hard about being a learning organization and an agile organization that constant, constantly learns about what's happening around and what's happening within. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a crucial success factor for mm -hmm. all kinds of organizations. And I think that, that's another struggle that CEOs have, right? how do you create that agile, nimble, yet? yet scalable organization, right? What, right. What, I mean, what, how, how would you, I mean, what advice would you give to them? Sure, so um, the, the first thing is, I think we are now, if you look at the status quo, a lot of organizations are preparing their talent for the past. So the, the kind of topics that we are trying to cover are not really in line with where the organization will be in the future. Right. So I think there's a need to fundamentally revisit, you know, what are we training our people on? Are we making them future ready? Right, I think from a concept level that needs to be done and second from a delivery standpoint a lot more can be done through learner centric systems as we spoke mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. earlier mm -hmm. using gamification anytime anywhere learning so why should all the learning happen inside the classroom can we do it just in time mm -hmm. and also making use of analytics uh, so far I think the whole area of HR in general I think uh, we've not used analytics the way it should be and uh, so if you look at how marketing has evolved as a function Five to seven years ago, uh, they were not using analytics as much as they are doing right now. And that function has completely been transformed mm. by digital. So now, how do we use those principles in HR and fundamentally transform the way HR functions? Yeah. I think the next five, six years, I'm pretty optimistic that HR as a function will transform mm. because of digital. Fantastic. You know, we've, we've just out of time, but it's been a fascinating conversation, Rajiv. Really, thank you for Pleasure being here. Pleasure being here. Thanks really for inviting me. Thanks. All right.